Hey guys, Dan here. A month ago or so, I asked on my YouTube community page whether you would be interested in like a build guide for a sim racing PC. And first of all, thanks for all that feedback. Got so many answers here and it seems like most people are interested. And the CPU is the most important part in a sim racing build because most sim racing games, even on triple screens or especially on triple screens, are CPU limited. So I thought we will start with the CPU. I got a few versions. I got the 7800X 3D, the 7950X 3D, then my old 13900K and I also ordered the 14900KS because I wanted to see which CPU is the best for the high-end system. But it turns out that pretty much the cheapest CPU of those four is also the best CPU, so it should be a suitable fit for all these systems. But I'd say I'll just show you the results of the benchmarks. So I didn't prepare super fancy graphics because in the end only the result is interesting, right? Before we get into it, all the AMD systems were on a Gigabyte AORUS Master mainboard with 6000 CL30 RAM, 32 gigabytes. And the GPU is the same for both. It's the Asus 4090 TUF. And then the two CPUs I tested for AMD was the 78 and the 7950X3D. For Intel, I used the Asus ROG Strix Z790F gaming Wi-Fi mainboard with faster RAM, not the best timings in the world. If you really want to get the best of the best for RAM, there's better RAM than this, but I didn't want to break the bank. Um, but this is still a fairly decent set. The timings could be a bit better, but it's running at 7800 CL36, same GPU. Prices higher, the 13,900K currently is around 550 euros. The 14,900KS, which is that special edition with higher boost clocks, just arrived today uh, for 719 euros. But without boring you to death, I'll just hop straight into the results. ACC, 1440p triples, one lap of Nordschleife with 70 cars, which is probably the craziest stress test on ACC that you can do right now because Nordschleife with a lot of cars really, really is problematic with performance. But you can see, um, first of all, ACC absolutely loves X3D processors. If, if you do ACC mainly, then don't even look at Intel because it's just no chance for Intel. But if we look at the results, it's actually interesting. The 7800X3D is the fastest CPU, the cheapest one, the fastest. Why is it faster than the 7950X3D, even though this boosts a little bit higher? The 7950X3D is two CCDs. Think of it like... To simplify it, there are two processors within one and they have to talk to each other and that slows it down. The Pro is like the 7950X 3D has one, I just say one processor with the 3D cache and one without the 3D cache. So you have something that works very well for applications, but you also have something that works very well for gaming. So if you only have a single PC that you use for sim racing and maybe also for video editing or application load with heavy CPU loads, the 7950X3D might be your best compromise. But if you only care about gaming, then get the 7800X3D. It's faster, it uses less power, it's cheaper. There's like no reason not to get it. If we look at the Intels, the 13900K is quite a bit slower with 91 FPS average, 55.1 for the 1% percentile and 53.7 for the 0.1% percentile. Interestingly, the 14900KS had a slower 0.1 percentile. I wouldn't really pay too much attention to that. It's probably just a minor lag in the benchmark or something. The 1% is higher. Also, the average is higher by about 11 FPS here. But if we compare to the AMDs, I mean, the 7800X3D is at 132.8 average FPS 72.2 for the 1% and 63.7 for the 0.1%. So yeah, if ACC is all you do, definitely buy AMD. If we look at iRacing, the gaps are closer, but the results are still the same for me. With the um, 7800X3D at 107.2 FPS on average and the fastest Intel chip, the 14900K at 99.7. This benchmark was done at Daytona at night. So really a CPU stress test. I also was driving in the rain. I did have SSR off though. Otherwise you get like 40 FPS at the start and that is just like completely unplayable. Here we at least get like 60-ish or something, which is acceptable, but it's just like a worst case scenario. This was also benchmarked on triple screens. I know CPU benchmarks, typically you do them on 1080p single screen, but for sim racing, it doesn't really make sense because especially iRacing, when you do triples, like there's still, the CPU has a quite big impact on it. So I always would recommend 
to look at the scenario that you will use in the end. I wouldn't really go 1080p triples anymore. It's the year 2024. I mean, if you want to save a little bit of money and a little bit of performance by going 1080p, do it. But I would always recommend to get 1440p triples. 4K is wasted money, in my opinion. Performance is horrible and it doesn't really look that much better in a sim rig. But yeah, these are the results for iRacing. You can see it is closer overall. And if you really hate AMD, I mean, the 14,900 KS also is a good option. It's not quite as fast as the X3D offerings here, but it's also not terrible, especially if we look at the 1% or 0.1%. It's actually kind of in line. So especially if you're after like a hybrid system that's also very powerful for applications and everything, maybe have a look at Intel as well. But again, if all you care about is gaming, again, it doesn't make really any sense to buy anything else than the 7800 X3D in this scenario. And the last thing I want to cover is power consumption because that is a bit weird here. First of all, we're looking at CPU only. I'm only looking at the sensor data that I got from CapFrame X. So I obviously do not know how accurate this is. This is just the data output for CPU only. And we can see the 7800X3D has an average CPU power consumption of 38 watts. The 7950X3D is already at 60 watts. And then the Intels are just like ridiculously much higher. 14900KS at 142, which is crazy. Multicore loads, the gap gets even bigger. But for sim racing, you don't really have multicore loads because the game engines are old. You can be happy if it uses more than two cores. So unfortunately, or fortunately for the power consumption, it's relatively low core load while gaming. But interestingly, if we look at the system power consumption, the AMDs are actually worse. And why is that? Well, there's a very simple explanation for that. You can see the power consumption of the CPU is, even though the Intel is much higher than AMD, it is still not terrible compared to the power consumption of a GPU. And why is AMD higher here? Very simple. The CPU bottleneck starts later, so the GPU utilization is higher. So if we are looking at power consumption for the CPU, yes, the AMDs are more efficient, but you also will get more FPS and therefore your whole power consumption of the whole system will be higher. If I would cap the FPS at 120, this was unlocked obviously for the benchmark, if I would cap it at 120 at what the monitors here are running, then the power consumption of the AMD systems obviously would be lower than Intel or at least not higher. But yeah, so for the first part, CPU, which is the most important component for sim racing, PCs, um, my recommendation is just buy the 7800X3D. It's the cheapest CPU and it's the fastest CPU, at least for ACC and iRacing in my tests. Obviously, I did it with the same GPU. It's always like important. A lot of people like to compare different systems with different GPUs. Like there's an iRacing forum benchmark thread, which is super helpful, but there are benchmark results where people compare with different RAM, different GPUs. So I always recommend to get the most reliable data. You need to make it obviously in a reproducible way. I'm pretty sure in the comments, I will get either roasted by AMD fanboys or by Intel fanboys that I did something wrong. It's always the same, but I'm always happy to hear your thoughts and maybe your opinion, what I could improve. Again, there's a little bit of potential on the Intel side if you go with better RAM. Also, you can overclock the Intel CPUs. I ran them at stock. Power consumption and temperatures were already so high that I really didn't bother with that. But in theory, you can do that to close the gap to AMD a little bit, at least on iRacing. I think on ACC, there's just no chance. But yeah, that's it for this video. I will make more videos covering GPU and then also show you completed builds that I would recommend for all the specific budgets. But an early tip from me, just get the 7800X3D and then whatever NVIDIA GPU you can afford. I would personally stay away from AMD GPUs. They just don't perform very well in the triple screens scenario. So definitely my recommendation would be to pair it up with the best NVIDIA GPU that you can afford. But yeah, that's it for the video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below for the algorithm. And thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.